All right, I am not sure if this is working. This is going to be my first live stream for 2021. Uh, I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a good break. And one of my goals for 2021 is to do a lot more live streams. And really, I if you're like a parent who's really interested in how technology is impacting your world, and it's impacting the world of your kids. I think that this is going to be a, a really interesting live stream or it's going to be a really interesting place for you. Uh, over the break, we had lots of different activities. I'm, I'm sure maybe you spent a lot of time mm, maybe with your own family or maybe you had to be isolated in this time. <laughs> uh, a lot of us are in different situations, but I think the important thing is we were we were always meant to to work, to learn, to to do everything together. And I think that it's uh, it's just really valuable to to see how we can still remain connected even in this kind of crazy crazy time. And so, uh with that, I wanted to first wish you a Happy 2021. Get the graphic going. Come on, yo. <laughs> yeah, 2021. All right. So I don't know um, what you have planned for this year, uh, but one of the the key that I my belief is that whatever we do together, we are going to be way more successful. And when we talk about our goals, we make them public like I'm doing right now, uh, then we are going to be a lot more successful. So that said, I am blessed to have you here. I think maybe this is one of the reasons why I am <laughs> uh, doing this right now is just to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I've always done things pre-recorded. I've always had editing. You know, there, there's always been a lot of polish for the work that I do, and I've never been comfortable uh, putting it all together. And so now you're you're getting to see all of that, which is exciting. Uh, so one of the the key things that I was thinking about. Oh, so first off, like I've done some things. <laughs> uh, maybe you've seen my videos before. Or maybe you've seen me on Zoom before. Uh, this room looks a little bit different. And one of the re reasons it looks different is I've, I've changed things up. Yeah, you notice that like the door, I have uh, a few more like degrees and certificates and um, some some pictures and stuff. Uh, but it, it's not just that, like a, it's a completely different configuration. Um, what you're seeing right now uh, today is like a, a different type of camera setup. It is I'm using a switcher so that I can switch between different views so I can show you interesting content. Uh, the example I might show is, um, for example, number one. So it, this is an example of like what my wife was working on, the face mask pattern. Uh, she she actually, you know, made these. She sewed them together. This was like a big big project, and she made quite a few that I'm I'm really proud of her uh, for doing them. Um, but uh, this was a time where it it wasn't easy. We had to self isolate. We had to be there. Uh, we, what happened? Um, yeah, so my mother-in-law contracted COVID. And so as a result, my wife, who was in contact, had to self-isolate for several days. And uh, that meant that, you know, for us, it was like we had a, like, this is like a solid week of just taking care of all the meals, cleaning things up. Um, I learned a lot about cooking and I know like I'm probably one of the people who loves the least about cooking in our entire family. And so for me, it was a great opportunity to just learn all this stuff about uh, about learning to cook, you know, being able to do things that I never thought I'd be able to do. Uh, and upon reflecting on 2020, uh, that was really a key takeaway. I remember speaking with our uh, some some teachers that I connect with uh, in the Midnight Pedagogy group uh, about how 
we are one of my big reflections for 2020 is we're capable of doing a lot more than we think that we're able to do and so i'm i'm pretty pumped about that the the other thing that i wanted to share is like you, you can see like the different configurations um being able to do the picture in picture thing is actually for me kind of exciting uh, it's a, a little geeky thing, but you know, I can, I can put my image into the corners now very easily. I can do all of this in a live stream. So it's going to make it easier for me to share my desktop and share content in addition to just sharing uh, stuff about the like the live, just the live talking head video. Uh, so I think it'll make live streams a little bit more interesting for you, but hopefully it'll also be a lot more informative. My goal is every single time that we get together, there will be some uh, purpose for like for that I'll be presenting and the purpose for today's presentation is just talk about hey what did you do for the new year and just talk a little bit about this new setup this new configuration what is it uh, what what is it for uh, so today like since we're already talking about goals I thought I might show you a different part of my configuration <laughs> So this is the, it's a little bit different. Um, I've also got a, a live camera um, and this is something to me that's pretty exciting. So uh, what you see here, uh, is that working? Uh-oh. Okay. Yes, okay, there we go. So uh, maybe I'll just put my image in the corner here. So what you're seeing here is this is, uh, a live view of this, this, um, yeah, basically it's a live view of my desk and on it, I have like a, just a little planning calendar. Uh, one thing I like to do is it, it's really important to have small goals every day. So I like to write things down. And so today's date is, uh, let's say January 8th, 2021. And I love to write down what are the most critical things for me to get done in that day. I like to write down uh, what are the things that would be really nice for me to do and things that I, I think I should do, but I'm just not gonna have. Um, and this is just like a toy thing that I bought from, I can't remember what I bought. I think it was like chapters or something. And I found it to be really useful, just like a simple way of writing down. And what's nice about it is like after I've written the thing down, I can just go, yeah, I got it right. Yeah, yeah, I got it right. So um, I, I love being able to do this. And so having these small little uh, goals and being able to say like, yeah, those are the things that I, I did today. Um, and so when I'm planning my day and, and so that's kind of what I'm I'm actually thinking about doing right now is planning out my my day. This is this is a fun, fun way of doing it. Uh, so that gives you a sense of like we're going to be able to show you um some things this one it, this camera i think has a little bit of zoom on it yeah it's like a it, it's pretty neat and getting this thing set up has taken me like honestly getting that just that part just the camera part uh probably has taken me several months and the reason for that was i had a configuration but it had no power supply I bought a power supply and it created this weird buzzing noise on my microphone um, just because like power supplies, switching power supplies generate a lot of EF noise uh, that goes directly into audio lines and you get like weird, weird things. So people were hearing a, a buzz in the microphone. I'm like, ah, that doesn't make any sense. There shouldn't be a buzz. Uh, and so I had to buy a, a different type of system. Uh, it's what it is is essentially like a battery pack and that converts basically AC ch that charges the battery and then the battery then sends uh, DC voltage into the camera in order to not create any noise. Uh, so it's kind of a, a super geeky thing. Uh, it is what I love doing. I, I've done a lot of these types of explorations. Uh, I've, I've done this huge saga on uh, trying to figure out the ideal charging configuration uh, for all of our different devices. Uh, it, it To me, everything is this, it, like especially technical things are these little experiments that I, I love improving on. Um, and in the same way, uh, parenting is this little experiment that I love 
kind of tweaking and experimenting and figuring out ways that we can improve on. And so I'll tell you a little bit of a story um, if you are still here. <laughs> okay, so for my son, uh, he has ADHD and he struggles a lot with attention in school. So uh, over the Christmas break, we got a lot of Lego. And I mean like one box of a thousand pieces of Lego, like three or four different sets. And so there was just an overwhelming amount of Lego everywhere. And in addition to like the concern of like me stepping on it and, <laughs> and, and, and those types of problems, uh, there was also the, uh, the concern around, well, what's going to happen uh, if uh, like he has too much of this and he's so focused on the, the Lego that he isn't able to focus on school. Uh, so we, I did something called the Angel of Recycling uh, trick. I don't know if any other parent uh, does this, uh, but my son attends a Catholic school and you know, we, we, uh, we talk about the angel of death uh, that kind of bypassed uh, the, the, during the Passover. And we, we came up with this notion of an angel of recycling uh, who, that looks, goes through the house, looks through all of those pieces of Lego that you've left on the floor, on tables, just in places that they're, they're not supposed to be. Because I, I put them in bins so it's easy for him to find and he, he doesn't want to put them there. He just leaves everything everywhere. So I picked everything up, put them into a giant box and I told them, well, the, no, I didn't tell them. <laughs> it was a little bit more elaborate than that. I wrote a ram ransom note uh, and it was written in, do you know, like the ransom font? They have like all the letters are look like they're like cut and pasted from magazines. Uh, it was beautiful. And it said, uh, I am the angel of recycling. Uh, I have removed all of the pieces of Lego that was not put away. And I've made a deal with your parents. So the deal is as follows. One piece of, if you have one day of really good focus, then you will get one scoop of Lego, one scoop of Lego. And if you have uh, one week of really good focus, then you can get some of those pieces back. So he has like a car, uh, I think it's like a Ferrari or like a race car. So he'll get one of those back if you do a whole week of really good focus. And then it, um, there was another one for one week of sharing. So if you had one week of sharing, then he could get, he had these mechs. It was like a, like an Iron Man mech that he received for Christmas, he can he can get that back. So it became this little game that he's got to earn back his uh, his thing. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more uh, about that in a future live stream. Uh, if if you're interested, let me know. You can leave a comment or something. Uh, I'll I'll read them afterwards. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this like in the middle of the night. Probably so that like maybe I'm a little bit self conscious about this and I'm I'm worried about people seeing it. Uh, but I think that it, these are the kinds of fun things that we have to do as parents, you know, in order to engage our kids in this time, get them to still focus on school, because I know that there are so many things happening uh, right now, like you're going back into school. Um, in addition to your own safety, uh, there's also like, how do I keep them focused if they have to be remote learning right now? Like, how do I keep them focused right after Christmas, which is insane. <laughs> Right? Like, how, how do we do that? And so uh, my approach has been to take some of them away. Uh, some, especially the ones that aren't put away, aren't taken, because then they don't really appreciate the gift anyways, right? Like how many gifts do kids get over the Christmas break? Uh, probably quite a few, right? And so they don't have the time, the attention to really appreciate all of them anyway. So put away the ones that they are not playing with right now, or they're leaving out somewhere and give them an opportunity to earn it back in the first couple of weeks of, of the year. They'll appreciate the gifts more. 
they'll be much more like it, the transition to focusing on school from like a couple weeks of solid playtime and I can't imagine how much um, like screen time and movies that they they've done as well. Oh, by the way, that was something I had to to limit as well. I'm I'm always worried about screen time for my own kids. Um, what I did for screen time is we we took the iPad, we put it away. Uh, I put really strict time limits on them because there was one morning where I like I had just woken up and. Uh, my oldest had already, like he had reached the limit, the screen time limit for YouTube kids. I was like, how is that possible? Like it is like eight, nine o'clock and you've already reached the limit. The limit was three hours. So he woke up at like six or seven in the morning. And then he had done nothing but consume uh, content for that period of time. And I was like, what? <laughs> What is going on? Um, so we we decided, no, we're changing those limits. So sorry, we're, we're changing them to 45 minutes. It's going to be 45 minutes each uh, for each device. And there's only going to be one device. And then after that, then we actually have to go and talk to each other and we need to spend more time. I mean, we had the time off. We Why not spend it as a family? And so that was my one of my big goals. Um, it, it meant that I couldn't achieve a lot of other goals that I had, you know, like for work or whatever uh, that I really wanted to achieve. But I mean, we were on vacation. I wanted to spend the time with family and it helped us realize what was important, uh, which was really our connection with each other and the relationship. Like I talked a lot about how um, on on Christmas break, <laughs> Oh man, I have a lot to say. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit, <laughs> I love to talk, you know, um, I, like this is one of the reasons why, you know, live streams from me might not be short. <laughs> mm. So one of the things that you see a lot in Christmas uh, movies is like many of them have different themes and stuff, but they all focus on the same overarching theme which is family, all right? So family is the most important thing. It's the thing that matters. It's not the presents. It's not the really fancy decorations. Um, it's it's not your career, it, it's family. So every movie is basically structured around, we, we finally discovered the true meaning of Christmas. And what was it? It was family. And so uh, to me, this is very interesting. Um, it's, I imagine, also very challenging because there are many people who don't uh, have, like they don't have a notion of family or their, their family situation is very different, uh, which is something that I appreciated in the movie Noel uh, because Noel was able to focus on, like there was, I think she, she had a mom that was separated and she was actually at a homeless shelter um, and then there was a dad that had gone through a separation as well and wanted to spend time with his son. So like more modern family situations. Uh, and like, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the future, but uh, the, 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 that's becoming more the norm. I think um, individuals of, I, I think there was some OED, OECD stats on individuals of marrying age. Um, how many of them are are married at I think age thirty? Um, sorry, I don't want to give you I don't want to give you bad stats. I have a responsibility to uh, to be accurate with the data. <laughs> so um, it, please excuse me as I look this up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Noel and the missing family. Oh man. Okay. So. So I've been doing some some more writing because I I just enjoy like the writing process and um, I there's a lot of stuff that I want to to share and so let's see if I can bring this up there you go bring me back up here um, so this is just about Noel <laughs> Noel the movie Christmas is here it comes with all the classic movies Home Alone Santa Claus Elf Arthur Christmas uh, just to name a few. 
Uh, and most of these movies, like they have this like main theme of the true spirit of Christmas is not found in glittery decorations or elegantly wrapped gifts from Amazon. <laughs> Rather, it's about being with family. Uh, and so Noel, the movie itself, doesn't really steer too far from this well-known path. Um, it, it's about like finding her brother Nick, who snuck off to Arizona to start his own yoga studio instead of being Santa Claus. Um, but it does touch on the, the two family separations that I'd mentioned. So a recently divorced father who has a boy interested in cooking and a single mother who is looking for a job and has a daughter who is hearing impaired. This is an all too common scenario across America. The rising costs of living and the stagnant wages have forced many to delay marriage. Uh, with a steady decline in employment, especially post-pandemic, the American dream of getting married and having a family seems like a like a, a relic of the past. So in the end, N Noel like everything works out. Like she connects with her family. Um, she connects with her brother. They, in turn, uh, support her ambitions to become the or to bring the Christmas spirit. And, like she takes on that role. Uh, but in reality, like that's the thing I wanted to recognize is like many many families just they don't have these stories don't have happy endings. Uh, so the media around Christmas um, can be this constant reminder of lost loved ones or painful breakups. And this kind of recurring trauma uh, haunts at some families every Christmas. Like, why do so many Christmas movies uh, promote this, these family themes even when half of their audience is not married? If you look at like just people of that age that like, um, well, and this is the this is the OECD stats that I was going to get at before because uh, I've been looking up the data. So the OECD average age for first marriage has increased five years from 1990 to 2017. The OECD average for women's first marriage was so the first stat of like five years was uh, the average age for first marriage overall. For women, um, the average age for first marriage was 25 in 1990 and 20 and now in two th in just 10 years later i think in 2000 it was 27 so 25 27 in 2000 and then 2017 it was 31. so 25 to 31 so six years six years later for average marriage uh, for men the average of first marriage was 28 in 1990 30 in 2033 in 2017. So clearly both men and women are getting married much later. Um, what we are seeing is for men, it is five years later. Uh, for women, it is six years later. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's some very interesting stats there. Um, and I think that this is something to recognize that, that families are different. Families are different right now. And we need to be supportive of every type of situation. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do these live streams is to support people as much as possible, uh, especially um, parents with kids. Because now more than ever, it's extremely difficult. We parents feel more disconnected from their kids than ever before. Um, it, in fact, like many kids feel more comfortable speaking to others online about all the, the deepest struggles that they're going through rather than their, their parents these days. Um, so I'll, I'll cover a little bit more about that in the future. Now, I'd love to know if this session was helpful for you, is there specific topics that you think I should cover in future live streams? Uh, again, this this whole session is just me running off the cuff, uh, making like I have some idea of what I'm going to say, but I'm I'm kind of 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running it fairly loose. <laughs> so I'm curious, what do you think? Is this something that you think would be helpful in the future? And if I scheduled a time that was more reasonable for you, like not in the middle of the night, uh, would you attend? And so if it is, um, let me know any feedback. Happy to, to share it and looking forward to, to speaking with you all soon. Thanks. I'm going to end the broadcast now.